Welcome to this overview of the New York State Low Embodied Carbon Concrete Leadership Act, or LECLA. This is new legislation that was introduced in September 2019 in the New York State Assembly for the 2020-2021 session. If made into law, LECLA would require the state of New York to factor in climate impact into the procurement of concrete by state departments, agencies, and authorities. In this video, I'm just going to provide a short rationale for the legislation, why it's important, and how it would align with the state's overall climate objectives. And I'm going to just break down the main pieces of policy that are within the legislation itself. But first, just to establish that there is an important relationship between concrete and climate, and this is largely a function of how much concrete we use. Concrete is the most common building material on the planet. We produce about 10 billion tons of it per year globally, making it the second most used material on Earth after water. Now, the impact of concrete from a climate perspective is largely tied to its main binding ingredient, which is Portland cement, which is produced through an incredibly carbon-intensive process. In fact, cement globally by itself accounts for about 7% of total global emissions. Now, to reduce the carbon profile of concrete, therefore, will involve using less Portland cement or changing how we make Portland cement. But to fully decarbonize concrete in the next few decades, we'll have to rely on an emerging category of technologies that allows us to take carbon dioxide that either comes from industrial point sources or that's pulled directly from the air and use it as an input in the manufacturing and processing of concrete, locking it safely away from the atmosphere essentially forever. This category of technologies is commonly referred to as Carbon Capture Utilization and Storage, or CCUS. Today, there's already a range of different established products and processes, both related to Portland cement substitution and CO2 utilization that are available on the market today, any combination of which will lower the climate impact of concrete. And an even greater number of innovations are on the near and long-term horizon that have real potential to radically decarbonize the material. In order to ensure that these alternatives scale up rapidly enough to matter to the climate, it's critically important that consistent, strong, and early demand be established. Essentially, the low-carbon concrete sector needs a substantial early adopter to create the market. And this is where New York State should step in and lead with its own procurement decisions to establish demand for these low-carbon alternatives early and on a large scale. And we can effectively fill this role because the cumulative direct and indirect procurement of concrete by public agencies, authorities, and departments makes the state the single largest consumer of concrete in New York. In putting in place this kind of a low-carbon concrete procurement standard will be completely consistent with New York's Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act. Passed last year, the CLCPA puts in place the most ambitious emissions reductions target of any state in the United States. 100% net zero emissions by 2050. However, the law does not include any specific policies or measures to directly reduce the emissions from concrete, cement, and other industrial sources. LECLA has been introduced specifically to fill this critical gap, and through a policy that is high impact, easy to implement, and very low cost. And in this second final section, I'll explain what those policies are and how they work. In proposing a low carbon concrete standard for New York State, LECLA draws on elements of policies that have been implemented elsewhere, such as California's Buy Clean Initiative, the City of Portland's Low Carbon Concrete Procurement Program, and the United States Conference of Mayors' resolution in support of CO2 mineralized concrete. However, the legislation does also include some novel elements that will be covered shortly. The legislation establishes that all departments, agencies, and authorities of the state will be obligated to implement the low-carbon concrete procurement standard. However, this obligation would only apply for projects that require a minimum of 50 cubic yards of concrete or more. The obligation would also be transferred to private firms that have been contracted by the state and which subcontract concrete from concrete manufacturers. Perhaps the most unique aspect of the bill is its most central, and that's the principle of climate competition. This is what directly ties the competitiveness of a concrete proposal or bid for a state contract to its climate impact. This impact is quantified using a standard life cycle analysis metric known as global warming potential, or GWP. A GWP score reflects the total emissions that were generated during the manufacturing and production life cycle of something. And a GWP score is one metric that's included in an environmental product declaration, or EPD, 
This is a leading life cycle assessment tool, first developed by the green building sector, has become an industry standard. An EBD is essentially an environmental nutrition label that allows purchasers to compare the environmental and climate impacts of different products. With LECLA's climate competition model, concrete manufacturers are incentivized to submit EPDs with their bids. That's because superior GWP scores translate into price discount rates. Here's a simplified example to illustrate how this would work. All bids submitted for a request for proposals that include EPDs would be ranked according to their GWP scores, with the lowest GWP scores being positioned in the highest ranks. During the review and selection process, a 5% discount rate would be applied to the submitted price of the bid that has the best and lowest GWP score. Lesser discount rates would then be applied to bids in lower GWP ranks. And bids submitted without EPDs, and therefore no GWP scores, would receive no discount at all. And over time, as high volumes of EPDs are submitted as part of state solicitations, the state could establish a GWP threshold below which no discounts will be applied. Since most construction projects, and therefore bids, incorporate multiple concrete mixes, each of which would have their own GWP score, for the sake of simplicity, only the aggregate GWP score of all mixes within a bid would be the basis of comparison. Another aspect that sets LECLA apart is a special focus on CCUS technologies, which capture and utilize carbon. The justification for this emphasis is based on the fact that substantial amounts of carbon capture, utilization, or storage are going to be required in order to fully decarbonize cement. This is because, one, cement is essential to concrete making, and cement is also inherently carbon intensive. While emissions can be reduced from cement, they cannot be completely eliminated. As an emerging sector, CCUS-based concrete has a long way to go and a big role to play, and therefore requires a special additional discount rate. For top-performing GWP bids, an additional 3% discount will be applied for those that incorporate state-certified CCUS technologies. When assessing the potential cost implications for the taxpayer of this program, it's critically important to stress that the inclusion of a GWP price discount does not diminish price competition among bidders. This is because bidders are unaware of either the pricing or the GWP score of other bidders, and therefore what relative advantage they may hold in either category relative to other bidders. In short, the nature of the incentive in the LECLA climate competition model is not the ability to charge higher prices, but rather increase competitiveness to win state contracts. The final policy component of this legislation is a tax credit for concrete producers and component producers. This credit offsets the upfront costs of completing an EPD analysis at a concrete plant. It's designed to offset the upfront financial burden borne by producers and to accelerate the rate of EPD adoption. The fiscal impact of this tax credit for the state would be minimal for three reasons. First, the tax credit would be capped at $3,000 per plant. Second, within New York State, there are less than 200 facilities that would be eligible for the tax credit. And third and finally, the credit will expire two years after the procurement program launches. And that concludes this overview of the New York State Low Embodied Carbon Concrete Leadership Act, or LECLA. For further information about the bill or the campaign to make it into a law, please visit openair.cc/lecla. Thanks for watching.